Welcome to 45 South tonight, Monday the 22nd of September. My name is Maureen McQuillan and I will be your host for this evening. News just in today from the Waitaki District Council. Council continues to explore coastal road options. Council contractors South Roads started work recently to place rock protection at the base of an underslip at a Rary Point south of Kakanui. In a series of slips along the coastal road, Council has had some, ch some challenging times to find suitable and long-term solutions to, damage, to the damage being caused by coastal erosion. Roading manager Michael Voss said the work to the project, the base of the underslip at Ariri Point, is just one section of the road that is being repaired and more has yet to be finalised. We had another slip earlier this month on a section of Beach Road north of Kakanui, which has resulted in us constructing temporary fencing. Specialist geotechnical engineers are investigating the slip and they will provide us with some advice and help us identify appropriate solutions. In May, an earlier slip occurred on Beach Road, causing a section of the road to be reduced to one lane. We are currently negotiating with a landowner to buy some land so that the road can be moved inland and further away from the coast and the damage being caused by rising sea levels and erosion. Coastal erosion posed some, challenging, some challenges for maintaining the coastal road that is both sustainable and does, and does not place too high a burden on ratepayers. Once again, we would like to thank the public for their patience while we continue to look for suitable solutions, Mr Voss says. Now on to a few articles from today's Omaru Mail. Omaruvian attends Rwandan Women's Tour. An Omaru woman had the opportunity to spend the last few weeks in Rwanda to attend an international women's tour because of her involvement with Zonta Omaru. Nicola Mountain was invited to attend the five-day international women and leadership friendship tour via Zonta, an organisation of women working together to advance the status of women worldwide throughout through the service and advocacy, all members of the Zonta Club of Omaru received an email invitation. Mrs Mountain said the Australian professor who led the tour, Shirley Randall, is an honorary Zontian and the content of the tour fitted with the Zonta mission to advance the status of women worldwide. I had a very interesting and inspiring time in Rwanda, she said. During her visit, which went from August the 29th to September the 13th, she learnt about how women of Rwanda had contributed to the rebuilding of their country since the 1994 genocide. Activities ranged from meetings with members of parliament involved in gender issues to visit the village and women's, and, and women's cooperatives. I have met a wide range of very friendly, welcoming people, some of whom have shared their traumatic experiences during genocide and during the healing and reconciliation process afterwards. After the tour, Mrs Mountain said she saw wildlife, visited some schools and training centres and experienced village life in Rwanda. She hopes to use her experiences to create links between some Omaru and Rwandan schools and to organise the selling of handmade Rwandan baskets in New Zealand and in England. A final a story also from the Omaru Mail today. District Council to introduce LED lighting. The trial of new LED lights in several Omaru streets has proven to have significant benefits for both residents and the Waitaki District Council. Affected residents were surveyed and in general feel positive about the change. Benefits include feeling safer and walking at night with the brighter lights and there are less shaded areas than was experienced with the traditional sodium street lighting. The LED lights, whiter than the traditional sodium lights that have an orange glow, are also more directly focused on streets rather than spilling into areas such as people's homes. Roading manager Michael Weiss, Voss said the LED lights are more effective in a number of ways. As we have seen from the sur survey results, residents feel safer and are generally happy with the new LED lighting system. With the trial now over, it is planned to introduce LED street lighting across the district.
This will start in 2016, depending on funding. Now after the break, I will be back with the weather and today's programs. I'm Jeff from Smash Palace. I started this business 25 years ago. Our main business is car parts, but we have car rentals, car sales, and a huge tyre bay with new and second-hand tyres. We carry a huge quantity of parts and can generally supply most orders, but if we can't, we're on a computer link-up that goes around 900 yards in New Zealand. Call us for options, new or used, prices and guarantees. I'm Chris at Smash Palace. We do tyres from little wee 10 inch brand new right through to great big mud terrain tyres. Our car rentals, we have 20 options from a little Corolla uh, to 12 seater vans and even a, a Honda 145 motorbike. Come on down and walk no more. We also run our car sales, our vehicles are just $2,000 or less. We're motor vehicle traders and everything that goes out has a new warrant. Try us for price options on new and used so you don't spend more on your car than it is worth. Welcome back and now for the weather, Monday the 22nd of September. At 1pm the temperature was 8 degrees, an overnight low is expected to be a chilly 2 degrees. Tomorrow Tuesday will be high, the high will be 17 degrees with an overnight low of 6 degrees. It will be fine, early frosts, high cloud at times, southwest dies. The sunrise will be 6.23am, sunset 6.34pm. Tuesday the tides, the high will be 2.33am, 2.50pm, the low 8.40am and 8.59pm. Now the programme for tonight, Jackie Dean uh, with her address, Three Friends Art Exhibition Part 2 and the Otago Symphonic Part 2. Now over to Jackie Dean's address. Hello there, I'm Jackie Dean, I'm your MP. I want to thank you so much for your support in the last election that's just been. My, my feet are still oh, 10 feet off the ground probably because I'm pretty excited by the way the election has turned out and I'm pretty thankful that the people of New Zealand have chosen um, the national government to lead this country for the next three years. We campaigned on our record of strong financial management and I think that message of responsibly managing the government's finances and looking after all New Zealanders through what has been some pretty challenging times is the message that people listen to and not other messages and other voices that were trying to push their own agendas. And, and I don't mean the other political parties. I mean people from out, outside New Zealand who try and come in and tell us how to run things in our country. I think as New Zealanders, we don't like that. I want to talk a little bit about the local campaign and I want to acknowledge and thank my fellow candidates in the Waitaki electorate. And <laughs> we were a pretty far-flung lot, really, weren't we? There was somebody who lived in Dunedin and who, who travelled through to Waitaki and there was another candidate who lives in Wanaka and that she was in the electorate and, and, and another candidate living in Alexandra and the fifth candidate who lives in Geraldine or on a farm just outside Geraldine. So we were, came from all corners and beyond of the Waitaki electorate and of course I have my home here in Wamaru. And we, I think we had a good fight. We had a very clean campaign. We had five or six candidate meetings and throughout that um, the candidates treated each other with respect and we were able to get our different points of view across and what I will say about the local campaign is that we were able to put out our vision for New Zealand and of course each of our vision were, was different but I have to say that we all wanted the same thing and that was what was best 
for Waitaki and what was best for New Zealand. So I want to acknowledge the candidates and thank them for the time. I also want to acknowledge you, the people of Waitaki, who gave me your vote. And as I've done in past terms of Parliament, and goodness knows this is, this is my fourth term, and I'm still getting used to that, but... But I say to you that I will do what I have done in the past four terms and actually before that when I was a Waitaki District Councillor for two terms. I will represent you and your interests as well as I possibly can in Wellington. I will make sure that your interests are heard, that your voices are heard. The voices of rural, provincial New Zealand, Heartland New Zealand, are heard in Wellington, around the debating chamber, around the decision-making tables um, in, in Wellington for you and for all of New Zealand. I haven't been successful at everything. Um, one thing that I feel very sore about still is that I haven't managed to resolve the issue of the Omro Courthouse to my satisfaction and to your satisfaction. And what we have now is an earthquake prone building in the courthouse and we haven't found a decent solution. We always had to put safety first so because of the Christchurch earthquake we've come to appreciate and realise that we need to earthquake strengthen a number of our buildings and the Omro Courthouse is one of them. But I don't believe and I'm not happy with the solution that we have been given which is what I call the portaloo out the car park back of the bride and I don't think it's satisfactory and I have already made my feelings very clear to the decision makers in Wellington. I will not rest until we have got a good solution for court services in Omaru. It may not be that we can return to the courthouse. It may be that we have to say goodbye to the courthouse delivering court services for Omaru. I can accept that, not easily, but I can accept it as long as we have a good alternative. But I do not believe, I know, that we have not got a good Solution for court services in Omaru with that portaloo, portaloo, not port a port a not port a co not port a courthouse, not port portaloo, because that's what it looks like at the back of the bride. And I'm beginning to sound a bit angry because I am. I, I don't I don't think we have been well served, and that is something that I will continue to pick up uh, very strongly. I am, however, um, heartened at some of the things that we have been able to achieve for Omaru and the Waitaki. One of them is that we have got a very strong, proactive, well-regarded police force in our town. And that is, that's not by accident. We've got some wonderful policemen and women in our town and in our region. But we also have a police minister who backs the police. And we now have a police force that is very proactive at getting in front of crime. Why does all this matter to me? It matters because I want you to feel safe in your homes. It's like my dear mother-in-law, Molly Peach, who's now in, lives in Auckland. She and her husband moved to back to Omaru um, because of me and Bill, of course, but because Omaru is a lovely place and a safe place for her. And, and I want us to retain that, so I'm very pleased about that. I'm also pleased that we have got a pro very proactive council. We've got a good mayor who understand that you have to look after your citizens, and that's what I understand too. And at the same time, you need to keep an eye on economic development because you have always got to grow your rating base um, so that you've got more people paying rates, which keeps rates more affordable for all of us. And I applaud our council for having that stance. So it's exciting. We've got exciting times ahead of us. Um, we live in such a great place. Omaru has got such a great future as well. I'm so proud to represent you, and I want to thank you so much for your support now and in the future, and I will continue to do my best for you. So with that, happy days. Spring is here. Christmas is just around the corner, and it's uh, been lovely representing you, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much and goodbye.
um, which uh, was built in about 1816, and when it was built, it was uh, almost in the countryside. Now, of course, it's surrounded by houses. Um, I've, um, I've, I've drawn the church as it originally was. Uh, if you go and see the church now, there's a, quite a big addition which has been put on in the late 19th century. Well, so that's as it was built in about 1850. Um, and um, I've put a man taking the horse home after the day's work. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's um, just out of the composition, really. It's quite a pleasant church. No, it does look lovely. Yeah, nice. Has it got a congregation? Ugh. Not many. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. think maybe 30, 40, maybe a few more, but not, not a great deal. So we're um, very rural again, moving on to the city. Yeah, again, this is um, on Banks from the This is just outside of Agarawa, uh, um, looking to part of Agarawa Harbour. And there's an olive farm, um, which you can see from the main road, which is the background to the two. Um, animals in the foreground. Mm. That's the bull and the sun. Um, so again, it's a competition based on several photographs I've taken. Um, and staying with the rural theme, and yeah. now we've gone into the area that Yeah, that again is in the there, there was a, um, one of the original um, French shepherds was a guy called Le Proulx, who was a um, blacksmith from Paris, and that was his um, original um, blacksmith shop in Anacara. Now it's long of course, now it's where the fire station is now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's a pencil for me. Uh, or it's actually a watercolour with pencil highlights. Right. Because it's very soft. Yeah. It's an well, atmospheric. Although mm-hmm. this one, the next one, tends to be an atmospheric with the. And the last one, that's the Anchorage Church again. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, opposite there was a, um, an acre of that two acres ground, which was the church tap. Right. And I'm showing the, uh, the horses um, carrying that piece of land. Um, they're carrying the houses now, of course. Yes. Did you get a house? I did, yeah. Did you, is there a strong. Uh, yeah, there is a real society, yeah. I was involved in that mm-hmm. for a number of years. Yeah. Right. Now, coming down the wall, we've gone into a real sphere here. Um, are they pets or...? No, um, they're just um, things which took a fancy, really. Um, these are all acrylic paintings. Right. And there's a series of nine, I think, which I did for this exhibition. Ah. Um, of um, various cats and dogs and rabbits, which I've photographed or seen over the years. Now, I, I meant to go up and read again, because they've got names under the... They have. I've the got little aphorisms on the Yes, so well, yeah. can, can we have them as well? Um, so the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the ginger cat, the ginger cat um, who's um, sitting in the snow and not looking very happy, um, the aphorism is, no one said life would be easy. Right. Yes. And the one next to it is a, a spaniel, which we used to own called Holly. That was a photo I took when she was quite young. Right. And um, as the young dogs do, um, she had just accidents. So that, that picture is, is named Accidents Happen to Move On. Oh, yes. <laughs> quite. Um, and the next is a large um, face of a rabbit, um, a wild rabbit, which I think it was a rabbit which one of our cats brought in when we were living in Agra. Yes. Um, the uh, aphorism there is Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. He wasn't a very handsome rabbit. Oh, well, I think you've done them great justice. The whiskers are naturally in the way you've done the fur. Well, I'm all of them, they're good, but I feel, I feel very more attracted to that one in the, in the centre. <laughs> and we have, what is this, this one? That's Another cat. Um, like a handbag hand cat, isn't it? Yeah, a white cat, yes. <laughs> Attitude is everything. Yes, yes. And what is it? Um, dogs have masters and cats have slaves. Slaves, yeah. Yes, yeah. so did you know were you a slave or were you the slaves? Um, it wasn't our cat, cat, actually, but I think the people who owned it were a slave to it. Yeah. Right, yes, yeah. yes. It looks suitably innocent, but yeah. probably quite manipulative with those other those eyes. Yeah. And the next one, another rabbit painting. Yes. Always put your best side forward. Right, right, yes. And again, the other question I was asking Barry about body construction, anatomy, when you're yeah. doing animals. How but do you have to do it's so often, I mean, the essence of it is to get the silhouette right, I think. Um, and um, once you get the silhouette of whatever you're painting or drawing, correct, um, or it appears to be correct, it's not necessarily anatomically correct, but um, it looks right. And then it's just a question of fitting in the shape, mm. um, probably this oversimplification. Now, mm. you said about a college or an art yeah. school that yeah. you studied at. Yeah. So, what was your thoughts? You said you then, or your father suggested that you might not have um, as good an income as art as you might have from some other lab. Yeah. So, what the art school, has it got names or has it got a particular type of art? Well, as I say, I studied architecture at that art school. At the same yeah, yeah, there was a department of architecture, so I, I studied there. Um, but it was a general art school. They did everything from printing to painting to sculpture. Right. Yeah. Um. Excellent. Well, we'll go and look at the, some other theatre trains in the corner here. So here we've got the domestic chook or whatever as well as the kia. Is it a kia? Yeah. Yes. Two kias, yeah. right. But, so going back to the, what draws you to do this? Oh, it's something about chickens, the shape and the, um, the colours they are. Um, I've always liked to draw and paint chickens. Um, they're stupid animals really, but they're, they're quite, um, they make a good picture. Ah, yeah. but there's, I always find it incredible that basically they just, the eggs are something that we can do so much with. Yeah. 
Ten? No, we haven't currently. Um, we've had them on and off all our lives, but um, no, we don't have any. Um, right. Should have bought a bigger section. Yeah, right. Now, over here, here, and this is um, the, the, best, the left side or the right side of the, and and also you've moved the out of the picture. I have. Um, th- those are two, um, well, one of these reputations of IKEA, of course, is that it destroys anything. Yes. Um, it gets its hands on. So I thought I'd do two paintings of IKEA, which are actually destroying the frame of the painting they're in. <laughs> oh, um, I was trying to think of how to describe that. Yeah. Yes, so the one on the left is chewed a great hole in the mat surrounding its picture, and also taken a lump out of the frame. The one on the right is um, just chewing away at the mat. So you've got over under each of them? Yeah, well, the, 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 the left one says, um, where there's a will, there's a way. And the right one says, do what you love doing and see what happens. <laughs> and just before we finish, back to the aphorisms for the, the chocks. And the, the hens is saying, always look like you're paying attention. Yep. And the cockerel is saying, don't stare, it's rude. <laughs> Very good. Do you do some writing in poetry as well? Um, no, not really. Um, I have done some writing, but I haven't done it for years. Too busy. I haven't got time. Ah, so you've got another art project on the board? Um, not currently. I'm, I'm doing a similar painting to these of a fox at the moment. Right. Um, How about the foxes in New Zealand? No, no, pity, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go to Canada and that's the excuse to go around the... We go to Australia, there's plenty of foxes well, in Australia. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, thank you very much, Chris. They're wonderful. I mean, realise that this is closing this week, but um, obviously people can contact any of you down here through the countries now. People are going to have to come up. Yeah, well, we are um, perhaps leaving the paintings up for another week or two. Oh, yeah? Our next exhibition is um, uh, Victoriana, and that's, not, um, that's going to coincide with the uh, Victorian week. So these paintings may well stay up until then. Right. Okay. So if anyone likes to come down and see them, they're, they're welcome. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.
Welcome back. I trust you enjoyed those programs. And thank you for watching 45 South tonight. Should anyone have any queries, you can find us at 17 Itchen Street or you can email us at 45TV, sorry, at south45tv at yahoo.co.nz or leave a message on our cell phone, which is 027 45 South. That is 027 45 76 884. Like us or comment on Facebook. Thank you again for watching 45 South tonight. Do have a lovely evening. Good night. <laughs>